George Miller has kindly agreed to present the award to Norma Morrissey. Please welcome George Miller to the stage. designers and cameramen and, and uh, even physicists and mathematicians who write algorithms and so on. And what's so wonderful about it is that you learn so much from each other. That the creative process is essentially the same no matter what discipline you're talking about. And the best of them in, in, in the time that I've been working kind of seep into you, you learn from them. And look, Norma uh, is certainly one of those. Um, and I, I, I find whoever they are, they all share a number of things in common. Um, the first, I would say, is that they're often very paradoxical people. Uh, they are people who don't rely on their status, they just are that quite often they don't realize how great they are or how talented they are. Uh, Norma, that certainly de defines her. The, the other thing I've found is that they're comprehensivists. They're people who see their work as part, of, as part of a whole. And what was so great about Norma is she'd come up with this extraordinary work and yet it wasn't, it didn't finish just at the moment that, um, that the actor or, uh, or the extra was presented on the set. She dug right down deep into character um, and I found myself as a director very often going to Norma to find out what was happening inside the actors, whoever, whoever they were, whether they were big, big movie stars uh, or, or, um, or, or, or just, just, just some person who was, very, who was particularly interesting. She was very, very comprehensive in her work. And it's really interesting because she was one of those people who, um, who he, and, and this is what I mean a little bit by paradox, she would often come to set and remember, for those who knew Norma, she was very, something very regal about her. She'd walk onto the set and everybody would sort of hush a little bit, oh, Norma's here, Norma's here. She wasn't intimidating, but she just carried herself in that way. And she would often point out an extra, a favorite, that she'd worked on just as hard as she might have on, on, on one of the leading actors and, and always encouraged me. And I always learned to listen to Norma and always encouraged me to, uh, to, to, to make a feature for those extras. And I was always grateful in the cutting room because she, uh, she would, they, they often had that special little bit of extra that, um, that, that, that helped the, the experience of the audience. Um, the other thing she, she did extraordinarily well was really manage the whole of the production. Um, uh, I know that the, the, the biggest stars, back, back on Mad Max 3, Tina Turner, who in this, herself was, a, was a, 
wonderful and a sage uh, in herself, she so fell in love with Norma, she tried to convince her to leave the film industry and go and do all her designs on the, at the time she was touring. And even Marlon Brando, I don't know if anybody knows about the island of Dr. Moreau, mm -hmm. but that was one of the most played productions ever in the history of cinema. And there was, um, and Marlon Brando fell in love with Norma because she had this playful quality that no matter what the stresses were, that in through the work, there was this, there's this way of making it enjoyable. And um, he, he, uh, you can read up about it, it's really worth it. There's been a documentary made of it. But he was really, you know, it was, he was tricky at the best of times. He was playful in the way he worked. But um, I think he relied on Norma enormously to get through that movie. Um, so, um, so that, I, I suppose I could go on and tell a huge number of stories uh, about it. Two interesting things about, about this. She started off, I don't know if you know, but she started off working for Vogue in England. And uh, I think she started off modeling at one point. But at a certain point in life, she decided no more photos. So they're very rare photographs of her. Uh, I made the mistake once of turning her camera on and she got very angry. Something, something about, about um, I, I don't know, as, as, well as, uh, um, as well as having this, um, this sense of uh, being able to get on with everybody, she could, she could walk, walk into, I don't know, a Hollywood party or some fancy do and would never be intimidated. But the, the other great thing about it is that she loved indigenous people and wherever she was in the world, whether it was in Australia or Africa, she would just hang out with the indigenous people. Something about them and how they related to, 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 to the earth was very important. And that's maybe why something to do with not seeing many pictures of, of, of Norma. Um, and the other thing is, if you look at her work, um, you could argue that amongst the, 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 the two of the characters, I guess, that seemed to impinge culturally, culturally at least in the 80s, were Crocodile Dun Dundee. Uh, this is impinged globally. And, and, and arguably Mad Max and Norma had in common uh, those two things. It's her work that directly, I think, that made those works iconic. Anyway, um, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna call uh, Ross Wallace who's going to accept this award on behalf of wonderful Norma Morrison. person here, Norma Moroso, is probably one of the best designers this uh, country has seen in terms of costume. And um, as George said, she, she started her career as a model and, um, you know, we can never really work out how old she was because um, she's very secretive about a lot of things. No photographs. And I think the photograph thing came from having been a model um, that somehow your soul was taken when the photograph took your camera, you know, the camera took your photograph. Um, but, but she she knew how to wear clothes and, and I think that really gave her um, this grounding because she could look at people and just know exactly what was going to work on their body and uh, as George said, she had a deep spirituality, which uh, she shared with all of us who ever worked with her. And um, 
there was many of us in this audience tonight who were uh, Lisa Barr and uh, Leslie Van Holt and Aphrodite, we all worked with her. She was an important part of my life and uh, she came, became my close friend and confidant for 35 years. So all through her career, I heard all the stories about all the people she worked with and she was always very generous in, in what she said about people and always spoke about the exciting and intriguing things about the people she worked with. And, and this sort of came through in the detail that she put into her work. And, um, uh, you know, she, I'll probably be struck down by lightning for accepting this award because she, <laughs> she never would have turned up to accept this award. So someone had to do it. <laughs> and, um, and, and it's, she's so deserving of an award too. Uh, and I think it's brilliant that um, the APDG have decided to do this. And um, uh, I was thinking over the weekend, what is the best way to, to describe her? And I just remembered that um, Winston Churchill once described Russia as being uh, a riddle wrapped up in a mystery inside of an enigma. And I think Norma Morrisow was very much like this. She was a riddle wrapped up in a mystery inside an enigma with crocodile teeth <laughs> and leopard skin and broken down by jackets. And um, I think we should all get on our feet right now and we should stand in honor of Norman Morisot, who was a brilliant designer of theater, film, all sorts of events. She was a photographer and uh, a fashion editor and a really brilliant Australian woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.